Okay, tomato five. Let's put the timer on. Great. So as we said before, we are going to pretty much copy and paste the previous test and design our API from there. Right. So at least we maintain the same behavior. Yes. So let's start by changing the names. First of all, it's not deprecated. Yeah. And the name here should be quiz test. Yes. So let me run this. It passes. It has warnings with deprecated types, but I think we can commit here. I think so. It's a new file. Duplicated, uh, deprecated test. It will be the scaffolding for the new APIs. Right. I like that. Because the new APIs will come out through this test. So why don't we start renaming things as we did in the previous episode? Mm -hmm. First of all, let's call this delegate. Yes. Yes. Okay, so this is the delegate. Now, what about this router spy? We can just rename it as well. Yeah, exactly. Fantastic. What else can we rename here? It's a handled result here. Yes. To follow the convention. Okay, what should we do next? So we don't know if start quiz is going to be a standalone function, like a free function. Okay, so we can rename these then to quiz. Right, so that's a safe, that's a safe choice there, yeah. We're getting close. So do we want this to be start quiz as a free function as we had before? Or if we have a type called quiz, for example, we have a quiz.start. Yeah, I like that because we namespace it with a quiz type. I think we can start from there. And then we would have something like a quiz here. Exactly. So should we rename the methods first to clarify this new intent we want? Yes. So the start game should be just start quiz now. So we can search here for start game. We can say start quiz. Yes. And although, as we said, start is going to be a static function of the quiz type, I think it makes sense to name the test start quiz. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so we named tests to clarify new intent. Yes. And now we should probably create a new type and let's call it quiz and quiz.start. Right, break all the things. <laughs> well, now we have a compiler error. Yes. So that's fine. So let's create the quiz inside the test scope instead of creating a new file, since only our tests will be using this type now. Okay. Let's say final class quiz. Right, yes. So we need a start function. We can pretty much copy this signature here. Yes. Well, we can copy the whole thing. The whole thing. Okay. And it's a static method. Yes. And we call it start. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to paste here the same code. But the difference is that this returns a quiz. Right. Of course. And here, we need to hold the flow inside a quiz. We can do that. Let's make it private. Yes. The scoring function now. Right. OK. It's private. Let's make it internal for now. And of course, we now get a delegate here. And let's keep the same constraints here for the delegate. Okay. Which means we can use the delegate here as well. Right. Right. So we would need testable and import quiz engine, right? So we can access the internal types, but we're going to add it to the list. Yes. <laughs> so remove testable from quiz test. Yes. Testable import. Okay, let's move on. What is the problem now? Right. Of course, this is a delegate. And our delegate should actually implement the quiz delegate. So why don't we just make it implement the quiz delegate? Yes. And the root to calls handle. Just to be safe. Yes. And the same here. Use handle. And we call the root to result call handle. And we have the compiler helping us remember to remove it, so we don't need to add it to the list. Fantastic. It is passing. The new API works. It's not exactly how we want it, but again, tiny, tiny steps. 
Yes. Okay, let's commit this. Absolutely. Introduced the new quiz.start APIs. Very nice. It's time to move this now to its own file. Let's create it here. Let's call it quiz. Cut and paste. And let's just move that to the quiz. Let's run the tests. That means this doesn't need to be testable anymore. Right. The import. But we need to make the quiz public now, I believe. True. So what needs to be public here is the class quiz and the method. Yeah. And that's our public API. That's how the outside world is going to start a quiz. Exactly. That makes perfect sense to me. Move quiz to its own file in production. Let's review for a second the quiz test. Yeah, we literally just move the file and fix the access control. Fantastic. Can remove this from the list now? Yes. But we need to ask some questions about the scoring function because it should not be here. We can move the scoring function to the new quiz file. Right. Okay. Very nice. Move scoring function outside the deprecated components file. Yes. It is not deprecated. Yeah. And the more we change the code, the more we see how this scoring function is just out of place. Yes. I think the next step for us would be to maybe allow you to inject a scoring function when you start the game. I was thinking the same thing, exactly. And maybe you should even call it scoring, maybe a result generator, a result builder, something like that. Right, exactly. Yeah. Which means we don't even need to pass correct answers. Yes. Right, because the business logic of playing a quiz game where every question scores one point right. is the old behavior. Yes. And we can maintain that behavior. Absolutely. But it also allows you to have your own scoring mechanism or just gathering data and send it to an API. You can do whatever you want. But I think this is a very good refactory. Yeah. Just by improving names. Exactly. You can see these new use cases emerging. You know, you can see the different use cases for what clients might do with your library. And you can facilitate that now by abstracting and, as you said, providing maybe default uh, implementations for some things. Another problem we notice is that we have a bunch of type constraints. For example, the answer is just equatable because of the scoring function here. And if we remove the dependency of this scoring from the inside of the framework and we pass it to the outside, now this framework doesn't require for the answer to be equitable and probably doesn't even require the question to be hashable as we have in the quiz delegate. Yes. Which means at some point we are going to get rid of this concrete type and remove the hashable constraint as well. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have a very flexible framework with separate business logic. And at some point we can even move it to a separate module if it makes sense. Yes. We forgot a warning. Okay. <laughs> Just remove. Let me see if it still passes the tests. Perfect. Let's commit this. Remove redundant router conformance. Yes. Okay. Another thing I noticed is that instead of defining this question and answer again, we can just rather use delegate.answer everywhere in delegate.question. Right. So delegate.question, this is delegate.question, delegate.answer. And the only constraint we need to add here is that the delegate.answer must be equitable. And we're going to get rid of this at some point. Very nice. So now I don't need to define the generic question and answer for this function. We just reuse the one defined in the delegate protocol. Yes. Fantastic. Simplify generic type definition. Mm -hmm. And we can break this as well to make it more readable. What do you think of that? I'm a fan of that. I'm not afraid to admit it. <laughs> I'm happy to do that. We limit our code here horizontally. Yeah. We can even use a bigger font in the next episode. Commit, fix, formatting. We are done. Until next time. Bye, y'all.